Hey there, folks. Ryan Dahl here, back again with another episode of Praise Charts Live. It's a new day, it's a new week, and Praise Charts this week is venturing into some new territory. Well, not really all that new because we've been doing, well, let's say we've been doing worship music for the last 23, 24, almost 25 years. Been really focused on resourcing the church for all their congregational worship songs from chord charts, lead sheets, choir sheets, um, multi-tracks, all of that for your Sunday worship. But in the last couple of years, we've started to venture into the worship choir, seeing your choir as a worship leading kind of force, a big worship team. That's kind of our vision for the choir. Well, now today we've started to venture just a little bit deeper into the whole world of choral. Here we are after two years of COVID, you know, most choirs weren't able to function and now they're starting to kind of come back. Here we are a couple of weeks before Easter, a lot of choirs are getting on stage and they are very excited about singing and not just performing, but actually helping to lead the congregation in worship. So a couple of months ago, I went to a choral conference, one of the first ones after COVID in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, just caught a brand new vision for the choir in church. And lo and behold, as I was wrapping up my time at that conference, we had presented some music. I actually got to help lead worship with Charity Gale, sang with her and played with her and had her as a, as a showcase artist. It was just an incredible, incredible experience. And uh, as I was in my hotel room, I got a text from Travis Cottrell. Many of you will know Travis's name. He's going to be with me tomorrow on this very same channel, talking about the choir as well. He texted me and he's like, Ryan, if you are excited about the choir, let me tell you, I've got an arranger for you. And he was telling me about Mason Brown, who he says, if I want a guy arranging songs for my orchestra and choir, Mason is the guy. So he's like, would you just call him? Maybe you could meet with him for coffee, something like that. So there you go. Mason and I got together for coffee there in Nashville, had a great time, thought nothing much of it at the time. But then the texts and the phone calls and the voice messages started going back and forth between each other. And we started getting excited about crafting a new sound for the church choir. Well, this is something we've been working on now together for the last three months, and I literally have Mason. He's incredibly nervous because he doesn't normally come out on, uh, you know, live YouTube channels like this. He's the kind of guy who's probably most comfortable just sitting in front of his computer with uh, logic in front of him, with finale. He likes arranging and producing. I'm pulling him out of those weeds because I'm like, Mason, I want to talk about some of the stuff that we've been dreaming up for the last couple of months. So we are introducing a brand new series of songs that we call the Signature Sessions. They are straight from Praise Charts. It's a product of a lot of work that Mason and I have been working on in the last couple of months. You'll recognize many of the songs that are coming out and that will be coming out in the future. We're going to play some samples for you. We're going to look at some of the music, talk about the different vocal stylings, the orchestra stylings, all that kind of nerdy, geeky stuff. So if you're into that kind of stuff, this is going to be a great episode for, for you because we're going to go deep into it. So uh, let's bring in Mason Brown. All right, Mason, let's just do this together. Let's just pretend it's just you and me and nobody's right. listening in. How about that? <laughs> Sounds, Sounds great. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Okay, well, I got to say how much I have enjoyed my time with you over the last uh, couple of months. We must have traded, we probably have traded, what, 24 hours worth of continuous voice Easily. messages going back and forth, starting sometimes at 4 in the morning. At 4 in the morning for you is 6 in the morning <laughs> for me. And sometimes I'm up before you going, when is Mason going to get up? Because he's in Nashville, I'm in Langley. Uh, but this is what happens when you catch, when you catch a vision, you catch a dream, yeah. you capture sound, and you're like excited about it. So, are you excited about yeah. this? What do you think? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think you're right. Like 
COVID just it messed everything up for us. And I think yeah. the <clears throat> the exciting thing about this was one, yeah, crafting this new vision, but also kind of kind of bringing life back into the church along, you know, with everyone else kind of coming back. And I think that's yep. what's been so exciting about this is that we're rele- releasing this at a time where people are coming back to church, people are choirs are coming back. And I think it's yep. it's exciting now that to see this kind of revitalization come back two years later after all this. Totally. I think there almost was a little bit of a question of like was the choir going to even make it back? And even was was worship going to be the same after COVID? Mm-hmm. And uh, we're definitely telling you, if anybody's looking for a sign of whether worship and this whole ministry has you know, is making a comeback, Praise Charts is doing amazing. <laughs> and just to say that uh, there's lots of music flowing through. Yeah. We're just experiencing momentum right now that is greater than we ever even had in 2019 and even choral music we're we're discovering a great momentum in that so do not yeah. fret if any of you have been wondering is the choir fading away it's definitely it's not. not no no not but, at all but i think it's changing i think the vision yeah. and the sound i think it's time for some new uh innovation some new sounds some new sonic rhythms melodies the way songs and orchestras are arranged, and that's kind of part of what we're going to talk about here today is we're we're talking about crafting a new sound for the church choir. What do you think? Uh, I know you didn't come up with that title, but what does that mean to you? If I would, if I say that, what's that new sound? Well, you know that that was one of the big topics you and I first talked about was, <clears throat> you know, where do we see choir music today? And what does yeah. it sound like? And I mean, obviously, it's had a very rich heritage. Yeah. Um, and is you know, just like everything else has evolved over time. And I think, you know, I, the good thing is about COVID is it's allowed us to kind of, you know, press, re, press pause, hit and press reset on right. what this looks like. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, you know, the, the exciting thing about worship music is, I mean, yeah, there's songs coming out every single week, there, you know, new songs for the church and And not everyone gravitates, you know, right then when the new song comes out. And so it gives us time to figure out, you know, what we want to do with the song. And I think that's where this kind of sound is is kind of being birthed from. It's, you know, we want to maintain the integrity of what makes the song the song. What makes that worship song that worship song, makes it popular. But we want to give it the thing that allows church choirs <clears throat> to get behind of it and want to do it in their in their service. And so, yep. you know, obviously choir is the key to that. You know, a lot of churches have orchestras. That's another key component of this. And so I think so for me, that's been my um, approach to this is I want to keep the song the song. I don't want to take away from that. I don't want to yep. differ from that. But I want to add the flair that that makes it attainable and sounds right for that church. And right kind of right. add in my own kind of flair, kind of this cinematic kind of trailer-esque kind of vibe and it's things yep. that I, I love doing. And so yep. it's really kind of this blending of like worship with, you know, cinematic movie score type things mm-hmm. with orchestra and all this stuff. And and it's it's weird. Like on one hand you go, well, none of those sound alike, none of those things, but they, they do. They all kind of go hand in hand. I think worship music over the years, like you can get away with a lot of different styles in worship music. I mean, if you take just, you know, recent albums that come out, some sound very poppy, some sound very rock oriented. And I think like there, there isn't, there's nothing that says we can't do this in church. And so I think the blending of these styles to me is the, the kind of the new sound that we're crafting. It's this kind of amalgamation of different styles, but they do all work hand in hand and it gives you this kind of new birth of church choir music. Yep. The other thing that is shifting and that we're wanting to encourage churches to consider as they consider the choir is that it's not just a it's not just a choir to learn a song to sing during the offertory as kind of like a performance piece and then it's sort of like the quote unquote, you know, token choir song. And and it's great right. when choirs come together and they le- learn these songs and they want to present them. That's all wonderful. But part of this new vision that's behind the new sound is that the choir can be actually actively engaged and intentionally leading 
uh, and yes. preparing for not just the offertory special, but the whole time of worship. That's the new thing yes. that we're bringing. And I think Praise Charts is very uniquely positioned for this because we're so immersed in the world of worship music already. Yes. And uh, and so we want to see the choirs kind of come alongside and, uh, and do that. So one thing I yeah. want to say for those of you who are listening in is you're going to hear some sounds today that you're like, man, my choir has like... 100 people in it. So there's no way we could ever sound like that. You know, we don't want to sound like Star Wars on a Sunday morning with 100 people, you know, in a gym. <laughs> We've got two acoustic guitars. So I get that. We are creating variations and versions of these arrangements that can work for the small church right mm -hmm. up to the big church. And there are a lot of churches out there across North America. You have a couple thousand people in your um, congregation, you have, you know, 50 or 60 or even up to 100 people in your choir. You have an orchestra of, you know, 10, 15, 20 instruments. So there's the opportunity for the use of a big sound. And you can't just all be spontaneous when you get together and you have to, you know, you need music, you need a plan and uh, an arrangement and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, so Mason yeah. is kind of that guy, that arranger. We have several great arrangers in the Praise Charts team, but Mason is coming mm -hmm. along and he is a master behind Logic, which is the uh, kind of Apple-based system. Some people use Pro Tools or, or different kind of operating systems to create yeah. the sound of the music. And then also a master of finale and arranging so that we get all the different instruments creating that symphonic, cinematic, kind of sound that ultimately supports the congregation to sing and uh, create that massive heavenly sound. So we're going to kind of dive in and actually look awesome. at these. So this is it. <laughs> Literally, people, these songs went live this weekend. They're a little bit hobbling forward because uh, <laughs> some of the files aren't all there, so it's all kind of coming out this week. But what I am showing you right now is literally live on the site. So this is Praise Charts right now, <laughs> the home page. And uh, now this stuff isn't actually on the home page, but I just wanted to show you that right down at the bottom of the home page of Praise Charts, we've already been doing lots of choral arrangements of uh, top worship songs like Mercy from Maverick City, Promises, Thank You Jesus for the Blood. Many of you I'm sure are very familiar with that from Charity Gale. Uh, what he's done has been an incredible song from Passion. So, uh, and then C.C. Winans, Believe For It. These are all choral-based arrangements that follow the basic arrangement of um, the original worship song. So, so that's that. But this is what's kind of new, is this series called Signature Sessions. And the first one that we have is uh, an arrangement from uh, actually, Charity didn't write this song, but she is most well known for singing it, for carrying the song. Such an mm -hmm. incredible. And so Mason and I started, we started on this one. Do you remember two months ago? And <laughs> no. man, the wheels yes. started spinning as you started crafting yep. that sound. I got so excited when I heard what you were coming out with. And uh, in fact, maybe I'll just play a little bit here so you can kind of hear a flavor of the sound. the whole thing we got some other tracks that we're going to listen to but uh maybe we could just i'll just show you some of the other arrangements the second one that we're going to be introducing and we're going to go deep into this one this is an, a, mm -hmm. a, a great sound same god yeah. just came out from elevation worship and mm -hmm. uh so we have a signature sessions version of that and then house of the lord which would be familiar to many of you came out a couple of years ago mm -hmm. has really prevailed as one of the number one uh, worship songs carrying through for the last 18 months. So it's like we couldn't not do an arrangement of this. So we have Absolutely. that. And then um, coming on the heels of this, not quite live on Praise Charts yet, but we've done a, got an arrangement almost ready. It's in the oven cooking of a thousand hallelujahs. 
by uh, Brooke Lidgetwood. Uh, we sang mm-hmm. that song in church on Sunday, and I was like, this is such a great worship song. It sings yeah. like 10,000 Reasons or like What a Beautiful Name. Like it's got Absolutely. that so easy to, to get into type of vibe. Yeah. So, uh, Mason, I feel like I want to play just a little bit of this version of Same God. Now, if you haven't we heard should. the original, then uh, you want to go to Al- Elevation's album, Lion. This is mm-hmm. our take on it, which is pretty much a very similar map, but mm-hmm. um, made for a choir-led congregational experience. So here we go. This is a little taste of it. Oh, the vibe. Love it. give it all all away it is available on praise charts to listen to the whole thing and uh, capture that you know what i love about this mason is uh, i love the sound where you can go from this majestic full massive choir and orchestra and then it just comes down to this intimate acoustic guitar piano and just really laying the ground mm-hmm. for the theme of the song, which is so uh, so deep and powerful, just like telling the stories of God's faithfulness through the ages. But then, you know, there's room for it to kind of soar back up into that just majestic cry yeah. out to declare God's faithfulness. So um, and I loved I, it. I think, you know, the <clears throat> all these songs, I mean, you know, that we're working on, like, the songs are amazing as they are. Yeah. Like, yeah. You don't have to touch them and they're they're fantastic. I know. Um, and so, you know, when when you hear something like this, at least for me, I you know, my mind starts spinning. Like, what can I do? What can I do differently? You know, but yeah. I, again, with that mindset of like everyone knows same God, everyone knows this song. And so I don't yeah. I don't want to to stray far from that. And so um I, I love I love intros to me, like, you know, especially like on a Sunday morning, like, you know, I I know these songs, I hear these songs on the radio. And I'm always excited to see what like the church might do differently with the song. And it, right. it may be very little, but something like that immediately catches my attention. I'm like, oh, this is same God, but it's, it's a little different. Right. And I, I, you know, especially so my my background, I am, I'm come from an instrumental background. I play trumpet through college. And, and like I said, and I have a huge like film score buff. I love trailer music. Mm. And so I just, like you said, like, you know, like you could see the king entering. Like mm-hmm. I, I just wanted this, you know, massive intro but then, yeah, like we're saying, like it, it works in this song, and then you come off of that, and then you're writing the song, and the vibe never really changes. It's all there. The chords are the same. It's all stuff you're hearing. It's just, you know, here's a little something different at the beginning to catch the listener. And right, mm-hmm. like as the song goes on, I keep orchestra in it, um, so that that sound never goes away. So it doesn't like come back and like, oh, that's weird. I didn't hear that at the beginning. Why is right. that there now? And so right. you keep hearing these things throughout it. And yeah. I, I just, you know, I think and it's cool. Like, you know, as you go on again, the, you know, I, I kind of made this, you know, what the whole purpose of this is to make these songs work in a, in a worship setting for a, a church on Sunday morning for yeah. church choir. And so, you know, at the end of this, it, it kind of quickly goes back into the very last verse of that song. Um, and, you know, and it, it, it all dovetails seamlessly. And, it, and I think it just, it really helps helps the church figure out, you know, again, taking such a great song and going, you know, how do I do this in, in on Sunday morning that's right. a little shorter, works for my group, and now yep. we've delivered that to them. Here is here is a, you know, a shorter version for you that works in your time slot and, you know, for service yep. and everything. And now you've got choir and orchestration all for it. And so yep. I, I think, yeah, that's, this is great where we're going with it. Beautiful. 
So when you come to uh, Praise Charts and you look at Same God, you're going to see actually it the landing place for it is uh, what you would, might call an album, um, you know, an album um, EP, because there's actually four mm-hmm. different uh, versions. The primary difference of these versions is the vocal styling for your choir. So what we were hearing, yeah. like the primary arrangement would be the choral or choral anthem. That's what we're calling it. A choral anthem is really, if you've got a pretty good sized church, a nice orchestra, a full size choir, you're going to want to go after the choral anthem SATB version. So the yeah. other versions, then the next one, uh, the, the fourth one here on the list, we call worship choir, soprano, alto, bass. That's what the SAB stands for. And that would be just a simpler vocal styling. We're going to show you exactly what the differences are and how they look, but it's just definitely for a choir that doesn't quite have a couple of rehearsals or maybe not quite as um, like vocally experienced, they're going to be able to grab onto this. And the keys of these songs are also a little bit different, right? So the original for mm-hmm. this was in D flat. The choral anthem version is available in D flat, I think B flat in G, is that right? G. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we're very specific about that to be, if you've got a tenor who's leading this song, because this is about congregational led worship, then, yes. uh, you know, there's going to be a good tenor key. There's going to be a great key for your alto lead to do it and uh, soprano and, you know, the different kind of vocal ranges. But with the uh, worship choir and then the unison two part and the sing it now, I'll talk about those in a second, but the worship choir version um, that's really the full choir is leading the song and you're picking a key that's really in the pocket for every vocal part, soprano, alto, tenor, bass can be really in the pocket for that. Do you want to maybe describe a little bit about what you were thinking when you uh, picked the key for the worship choir version of it? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think, uh, I guess maybe to kind of jump a little ahead of you, in my yeah. mind, the the unison two part, sing it now, and the worship choir slash SAB kind of all fall into the same category. So like right. you were saying, the, the yeah. choral anthem is like your big church, you know, kind of version that you get it all, you know, you have several keys, um, you know, melody moves throughout the vocal parts, um, yeah. you know, potentially have a worship leader in front of it, everything. So that's kind of the idea behind that. The other stylings are more, I'd say, along traditional chor- choral uh, idea. And so the the purpose of those is they're typically in one key. The melody will, will always be in the soprano voice to help that. And they don't have to have a worship leader up front. If you're not the church that has that and your choir is the worship leader or your choir yep. is the feature, then yep. you don't need the worship leader up front. So everything is sung from the choir's perspective. And nice. the melody is always in the soprano. So you yep. there's this sense of, of kind of ease to it that you don't have to worry about with the choral anthem version that it just it requires more. And so yep. um, that's kind of the the kind of the quick breakdown of how I view the worship choir unison two part and sing it now versions. Yep, very good. And you can see that uh, for all of the songs for House of the Lord and for I Speak Jesus, we've got all uh, four versions that are available to you. Why don't we actually just look? I downloaded yeah. the music here. So this is the... Um, this is, and you know what, I could actually, this is what I could do, is uh, just play a little bit from the beginning so you can kind of see with the music. This is yeah. Same God, right? There we go. So there's that D. Oh, I love that. I love the horn. So beautiful. Okay, so this is kind of like a unison start. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit here. Yeah. Actually, I'll just I'll I'll just look we'll just look at the music here together and then you yeah. can just kind of make some comments that definitely probably as opposed to typical choir presentational music because this is a worship song, sometimes mm-hmm. the best present the best approach to worship is to mix melody only approaches and then bringing out two three and four part but it's not necessarily just four part from the beginning to the end because 
we use the uh, the harmonies to kind of shape the you know the pathway of the song. So that's kind of what you're seeing yeah. here, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think I mean every you know at least from my standpoint, everything feels intentional. Like it's not. Yeah. It's not, oh, because we're at the chorus, it should be right. such and such. You know, right. there, there is a reason why certain things happen, and so yeah, um, yeah. And even it, here, it, like this said, is like a, this is very like octave based. Oh God, my mm -hmm. God, I need you because it just fits the arrangement. Yep. But we are mm -hmm. moving towards a place where there's going to be, you know, as it goes into the the second verse. Here we've got the four parts. Yep. So this is right. something that I want people to pay attention to because I'm going to show you. Uh, we'll probably go to measure 39 in all of the different versions so you can see what the different um, vocal arranging mm -hmm. looks like and you can pick what's best for you. But do you want to describe your approach to the vocal arranging of the the choral anthem here? Yeah. So again, kind of, you know, the, the good thing is a lot of these songs, you know, from the get go have like, you know, background vocals to them, you know, their, their yeah. worship team out front and stuff like that. And so, you know, like in the case of this song for Same God, you know, the Elevations version, they kind of had this two part thing that was happening. And like that just lends itself so well to to choirs as well. And so the cool thing yeah. with this is here, the there, there, there is only a two part thing happening. And so the okay. sopranos in this case have the melody and so do the basses. And then the altos and tenors have the harmony. And so now you have this inner voice that's singing a harmony between two different voice types, very strong. Right. And right. then your sopranos, you know, and, and your bass is not having the melody as well. So, um, so that, again, kind of the purpose of that, like, you know, it, again, it sets up something new, but we're obviously not at the big part of the song yet. Right. So there's really no need for a three or four part, you right. know, kind of full range to go, but this gives something new to the listener. You know, your, your worship leader is still out front singing the melody and then behind him, or if, if you have a praise team, you've got these other parts that are now coming along beside him. Yeah, I think that what I'm seeing now, this is part of the new crafting, the new sound, like what we're talking about for the church choir is that you're not just a four part choir from beginning to end, like traditional mm -hmm. choir music. Now your choir is leading worship. So you're helping to shape vocally shape the path of the song, right? Going from yeah. unison to full on octaves to two part. Now, even though here, as an example, you're singing in four parts, but really you're emphasizing yeah. two parts and then mm -hmm. help me see where it starts to really break into all four parts. Yeah. So yeah, keep scrolling down. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in this and right real quick, sorry, go, go up, go up just yeah. here. Okay, <laughs> okay. So um, I may not face Goliath, but I've got my own giants to me when I, you know, when I hear that line, yeah. I'm like, gosh, like, you know, if, everyone in the world knew that line and could sing that line. It would be incredible. So I went back to this unison to kind yeah. of give this power. Beautiful. And so, and then if you scroll down when the chorus happens, now we're at the, yes. the chorus full, you know, three, four parts. I want to view it melodies in the tenor. So it kind of puts them up higher and makes them sing stronger. Yeah. Um, you know, now the ladies are up, you know, and they're having a harmony above the guys. So it just now, Again, you're there, the band's driving, the orchestra is there to help you, and now your choir's got a full, you know, range yeah. of, of of vocals behind. Again, if you got a worship leader out front, he or she's singing the melody, and there's just this kind of wall of sound that's coming yeah. along behind that's them. That's beautiful. So I think what we should do now is I'm going to flip yeah. to, that's the score. We're going to come to that after, but I noticed that that was mm -hmm. measure 51. So I'm going to skip ahead yeah. to measure 51, mm -hmm. and we can actually see the difference here mm -hmm. between the worship choir. This is choral anthem version, which is mm -hmm. the big choir. The worship choir yep. version is like this, yep. and you can just tell that the... That like the vocal strain or expertise is yeah. just dialed back a little bit. So help exactly. Us out with that. So yeah. yeah. So now we're in the key of G. Um, yeah. And so yeah. So we're at the chorus again. From a track perspective, everything sounds the same. It's still full. Right. It's still big. You know, whether you're using stems or track, whatever, it's still there. But the yeah, the idea is here now. The melody is in the soprano voice, and it throughout this entire song, it never mm -hmm. leaves the soprano voice or the female voice. And so right. um, so the idea. So you, you still throughout this, you still get an idea of, it kind of goes between like three and four part harmony and you, you still get the idea, but it sometimes because of the range, it breaks to this open voicing. And so it's not like a, 
you know, it, it kind of keeps everyone in a, in a safer range. Right. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the way this happens when, you know, when you get this, this three part voicing is everything is still there. It all still sounds great. There's still a wall of sound. It's just different. It makes it more attainable for yep. that type of choir. And like, so this is more of a baritone voice. So like your high note is typically going to be like a C or C sharp as opposed to the choral anthem where you saw the high note was, you know, an F Yeah. big difference. Yeah. Love it. Okay, so then I'm going to move over to the unison two part, and I am going to flip ahead there to measure 51 because I feel like yep. that's the best place to be. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I, I think that the uh, intention of this is that it's the soprano and tenor are singing one side and the, mm -hmm. and the altos and the bass are singing the other side. Do you want to describe that? Yeah, so so the way the unison two parts work, two part works is again the same thing. Soprano or the melody will always be in the the higher voice. So the, in yeah. this case, soprano and tenor. And the way that this works is, in the in the Devisi sections, uh, so like this, what you're looking at, the top notes are the soprano and tenor voice, and the bottom notes are the alto and bass notes or right. alto and bass voices. And so in the previous sections where it's just a unison line, you basically your choir is just singing octaves, whatever kind of feels comfortable for them. And so yeah. when you look at this, so again, you know, the the biggest, you know, the biggest difference is you you will never have like a three and four part harmony. You'll never have, right. you know, the bass is singing roots or tenor singing higher up. This is very attainable for that kind of really small choir, you know, the uh -huh. 10 to 12 to 15 that generally probably mostly have mostly ladies and less men. So that way your melody right. is always heard. Again, you don't need a worship leader for this. You can just have, right. you know, the members out front choir members and they are leading the song. And so yeah. that's kind of how this works. That way you still get a harmony. There's still something different for the listener, but it's very attainable. Yeah. And the reality is a lot of churches, when they think choir, they're talking like eight or 10 people. Then they're like, I don't even have a choir, you know, it's just, well, but, right. but I just want to encourage you, if you've got eight or 10 people and you want to do like a larger voice thing, go for it. Mm -hmm. We've got music yeah. that can help make those voices shine. And if you're going to take eight voices and let's say they are at moderate skill level, their confidence is just going to boost if there's more of them singing the same part together, they're going to feel Absolutely. that's the whole purpose of this unison two part. It's not like yes. a, it's not like easy worship or like simplified mm -hmm. or something. It's just, we're just trying to gather together voices, give more power to the, you know, the deeper essence of what's kind of going on, on vocally. So yeah, uh, I go ahead. I say, yeah, I, I think I think that's exactly right. It's to to make them feel comfortable in what in what they're singing. In this case, yeah. like you know, we've given everything that's strong to you know the voices that you have probably the most of, and so yeah. I think it just it does. It makes everyone feel a little more comfortable in what they're singing. They're not having to sing something that's hard and complicated, and you know it gets really nervous. No, it's this is this is tailor made for that. So the last version we have, we call Sing It Now. Some people may have heard of various series, uh, you know, in the past, Ready to Sing, Ready to Worship, um, mm -hmm. uh, Worship Ready. There's lots of different kind of variants on this approach. But the key is trying to write an arrangement for an SATB arrangement where uh, you're not going to be stretching the choir too much vocally, like up at the top end and the bottom end. And they're mm -hmm. going to be able to probably pull it off within one practice and and be right in the pocket of, uh, you know, a comfortable vocal range. So I'm wondering yeah. how this differs from the original choral anthem, because I think that a choral director is going to be wondering, should I go for the Sing It Now version should I go for the choral anthem version? Because it's the same track, the same mm -hmm. arrangement. Um, yep. Do you want to describe? And then I'll flip back and forth between the two. Certainly yeah, the key so, is different. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, again, we're in the key of G. The That's the thing. So, if you've noticed, the SAB, the unison two part, and uh, the sing it now versions are all in the same key. It's all the key of G mm -hmm. because the melody exists in the soprano voice, the high voice. And so, right. um, so yeah. So, the you know, between the past three versions that we've looked at, you notice that we still have four part harmony here. Like, it looks you know, from a, uh, a note perspective, it looks like the choral anthem, but obviously ranges are different. 
there's open voicing. And so um, the the biggest difference here is is that, is that kind of the same thing with the SAB and Unison 2 part. We want to make it attainable for everybody. We want to make the ranges kind of um, down in that in the sweet spot of everyone's voice and everything. Um, but we still want to give them the, the full harmony, the full array of what kind of existed in the choral anthem version. So if you look like, just to kind of, I guess, maybe kind of get really minute here, like the first mm-hmm. really two beats is exactly the same as what you would see on the choral anthem if you were in that key. But then as, again, as the line, as the melody moves up, we don't want the whole choir to do that because it's going to push everyone higher. And so then the voicing start to space out. Right. And so, again, if you like, if you look at the rest of that measure, you know, at yep. some point the tenors actually have the melody with the sopranos, but they'll break back off into, into parts. So right. you kind of get this kind of, amalgamation of a couple different of the of the voicings but you still have a full range for the choir to sing what they can sing and basses still get to sing you know with the root and with and with you know the actual bass line and stuff like that and at times you still have a full you know four-part thing and sometimes it's a close triad together sometimes it's further apart um but but i think that that's to me that's the biggest difference but yeah like again you still got this full track behind you and the good thing with this is Again, you can let this be worship leader led. You can let it be choir led. Either way, right. it works. Right. Um, and right. so I, right. I think you know that's that's a, a nice uh, thing to have with this as well. So there you can see. I'm just looking. You can see the difference between um, this would be not as much what we call open or open voicing. Is that right? Correct. Or open Correct. voicing, it's, where yeah. the bass is like it, particularly down here in the second measure. You got the bass down there, but the tenors are really forced up a little higher. So that the mm-hmm. altos can get higher and yep. uh, support that, and then you could see uh, with the "Sing It Now" version, there's more of an mm-hmm. open voicing, so the tenors aren't yep. quite going so high. So yeah, yeah. and I say again, like you know, in, for the most case throughout this chorus, you're you know between your soprano, alto, and tenor, you're going to have a you know a three part harmony, so you're going yeah. to hear a full chord, but it's just yeah. going to sound differently, and it and it again, it's putting. It, putting in kind of the sweet spot of everyone's vocal range. And so it, yep. just, it makes everyone feel very confident about what they're doing. And I like, like that, what you said. Yeah. Confidence is a big key for this. Yeah. Well, let's go back to uh, just to the, the song detail yep. page here, because uh, as people come, you'll be able to see with the signature sessions, this is our, whenever it's signature sessions, just so you understand, that means that we have done our own recording. We've made our own track. We've made our own sort of, take on the song, which is not going to venture that far away from the original Mm -hmm. recording, but it is going to make sure that the song is well suited for most Sunday morning worship experiences where, you know, we're thinking most churches aren't wanting to go on for like eight or 10 or 12 minutes, like some, you know, more charismatic oriented song, say from Bethel or Maverick City, if it was done in kind of a spontaneous worship moment, you can have some incredible right. songs, but they just need an arrangement that just hones it in for, yes. you know, a wider spectrum of churches on a Sunday morning. So that's what we're yeah. trying to do with signature sessions. Um, and even, I would say, with I Speak Jesus, Same God, and House of the Lord, all three of those arrangements were fairly good right from the outset. It's just... Mm-hmm. We were adding more of, a, and when, when I say we, I do mean you, but I'm just like, I feel like I'm a part of this. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We have kind of crafted this uh, together, this vision. But yes. the the more that, you know, the cinematic orchestral kind of mm-hmm. sound that supports it probably isn't always there from the original recording, which might be more right. of a, a typical band setting. Now, if we go yeah. into the uh, actual arrangement here, and you can click up to here, you can see all the different products that are available. So look at this. You'll notice on the choral anthem version, there's 51 products that are available, which seems like a lot. I don't want you to get too overwhelmed. but uh, And Mason has literally been producing all of these things. I'm sure you're just like racking your head going, what have I got myself into? Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, the uh, so there you've got the anthem SATB and piano. Then there is just an SATB version. I will let you know for those who are interested that we're having print version of these coming out, uh, hopefully within the next month. So that will be available. There is the finale file just for the piano vocal, and then the orchestration with various packs. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to buy the whole orchestration, we've got other options. 
And then uh, actually, this is brand new to Praise Charts as well, that you can buy individual instruments if you just want to, you know, if you got that trumpet player who wants to play and join in or a synth player who wants to play this string reduction, you can do that. And mm -hmm. then we have made available listening tracks, accompaniment tracks, multi-tracks, split, and then soprano, alto, tenor, bass, rehearsal tracks. For now, yep. these tracks have the electric piano playing out the lead line. So there, there's not a singer behind it. This is just kind of where we're at right now. But mm -hmm. um, Mason can maybe tell you a little bit about how those are made. It's just, it's the next best thing that we can do to help get your vocalists to tune in to what they should be singing. Yeah, and, I, and you know, for, for anyone who goes to these and, and listens, I mean, and just in what, what Ryan, what you were playing earlier from Same God yeah. and even I Speak Jesus, like, yes, there there is no choir that is present on the recording. Obviously, all of the materials are there to support yeah. the choir. That is the whole point of, of this series. Um, so don't be discouraged by that. And so we we wanted to, you know, we still wanted to give the choir some sort of rehearsal, you know, for the time being that even though we didn't have a, a vocal, you know, rehearsal for them, some some kind of rehearsal just yep. they can listen to and get them ready for what they're wanting to do. And so the idea was to kind of go with this electric piano kind of thing. And so um, if you're, you know, for the, if you're listening to any of the other kind of rehearsal tracks, it's kind of the same mindset. So the the track is panned uh, to one side with the rest of the vocals to that side. And then the rehearsal vocal itself panned to the other speaker boosted yeah. way up. Uh, yeah. So you can, you know, so you can still hear it. And the great thing is we're going to have these for, again, for every key and every vocal style. No matter what, yeah. you know, no matter which ver version you buy, if you buy the Unison 2 part and you download you know, the bass rehearsal for that, it's going to sound and look just like the PDF that you've bought for the Unison mm -hmm. 2 part. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. So if you look at I Speak Jesus, you're going to get the choral anthem is going to be available in three different keys. And then the mm -hmm. worship choir, Unison choir, and, and um, Sing It Now will be available in one key, at least one anyways, that is yeah. a really dialed in key for that kind of choir-led experience. So mm -hmm. uh, so I want to go into the orchestration, but before I do that, I just want to give you a sense of like where we're kind of heading as praise charts, how we're going to kind of approach this with new songs. This is already going to be starting to happen. So right now, if you're on the homepage of praise charts, this is in, you know, end of March 2022. Here we are. And Honey in the Rock, Man of Sorrows, by the way, Mason arranged that song when he was with Brentwood Benson as an arranger, and uh, we're distributing it for them, and it's like the number one uh, song heading into Easter. So kudos to you, Mason. Thank you. I wish that Thank we you. had you doing that song under <laughs> praise charts, but hey, we're just glad to be working with those guys, and it's a wonderful Absolutely. arrangement that features Travis, which, shout out to Travis, he will be with me tomorrow talking about uh, a lot of the same kind of stuff, so that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. But... Um, one of the next bigger songs right now, new songs, is from Brooke Lidgertwood. I mean, Brooke wrote so many incredible yeah. songs, uh, not the least yeah. of which is, uh, you know, What a Beautiful Name. I mean, she co-wrote, of course, but What a Beautiful Name and then right. um, King of Kings. Um, is it King of Kings? Am I saying that right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that King one. Of Kings. Uh, just an incredible, incredible song. And so... Yep. The Honey in the Rock is a slightly different styling than those, but a beautiful, beautiful um, arrangement. So here's what we're doing is we're taking this song, Honey in the Rock, which already we have, uh, mm -hmm. you know, full orchestra and everything available for. This all matches the original recording. We're going to take all of that and basically spin off and do the choral anthem version the worship choir version, the sing it now version, and the unison two part, all based on this original recording. So we're going to be doing that with lots of these worship songs that are coming out. If you have a choir and you want to engage your choir in leading worship, then you're going to start seeing songs coming out first as like the 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 worship oriented version, which is what we have right now. But then if it starts to say Honey in the Rock, and in brackets it says Choral Anthem, you know mm -hmm. that the vocals have been really dialed in for your choir. Then, yeah. and this is kind of what I wanted to say, um, 
Mason, is that the best of those songs, if we deem appropriate, we're going to move into this signature sessions where we're going to be like, all right, now, Mason, let's get a little creative. Let's put the praise charts signature profile on these great songs. And, um, And so... I mean, the reality is we can't do it for every song. So we have to right. watch in praise charts to find out which are the ones that are really worth diving into. We chose three to start, um, but we want to create a vast, wide yeah. catalog of great worship songs that your choir can help lead your congregation in worship and then yeah. be selective about the very best of those to take into these uh, new formats. So, yeah. It's a lot the, of different. Thing, Go ahead. Yeah. There's another thing I, I was going to say, um, and this kind of tails into what you're talking about. But um, with all of the signature sessions, one the the good thing is also is we have stems available in the keys that we are creating. You know, yeah. We have multi tracks, not just in the original key, not the key, not the the main audio that you're listening to, but we have multi tracks available in designed in right. those keys. And so the good thing is. When you're buying it and you're going, okay, I want to do same God in B flat, not in D flat. Yeah. You can actually download stems for that key that are right. actually in B flat, not pitched. Yeah. De- actually in B flat. And then so then when you pitch them to, you know, if you're going to B or if you want to do it in A or something, then you're not stretching it all the way from D flat. Yeah. You, you know, you're a lot closer to where you are. Um, and so I, I, you know, again, kind of giving everything from this. And I think, you know, what you're talking about with, with Hunting the Rock being able to like quickly add on these products and everything, you know, the, you're, you're going to have the, the coral part, you're going to have this and, you know, you're still kind of maybe limited to having, having these original stems, maybe not, you know, maybe, maybe you can, mm-hmm. you figure out a way around that. Um, but then eventually, yeah, once we get into the signature sessions version of it, then you have several different keys available mm-hmm. to you for mm-hmm. those stems. And again, that you're not having to stretch a fifth, you know, away from you that didn't sound yeah. pretty mangled. So I think yeah. that's that's really exciting for it. Yeah. So if you're watching Praise Charts over the next, say, six months, uh, mm-hmm. and hopefully you can kind of understand that that if if the song doesn't have a little, you know, um, extension to the title, then it's probably just based on the original recording. And if it does have that title extension on it, hopefully you'll know what zone you want to aim for. If it's the choral anthem or the worship choir or sing it now or two-part unison, and you'll be able to zone in very specifically on what matches exactly your church. And then if you see the signature sessions versions coming out, you'll be like, okay, what is what is Praise Charts done now? You know, what's that sound? Yeah. And, uh, and really... With the signature sessions, maybe this is just a personal taste of Mason and I, or I don't know what it is, but we just want to kind of create that majestic, cinematic, flowing, you know, epic sound and have the orchestra and the choir and the congregation all participating in this. That just makes you want to, like when we played Same God, I feel like I could see the whole church just rising, standing, right? It's like, get ready for the king. Just a a together experience. That's really the dream and the vision of all of this is, uh, uh, yeah. And and one day we'll, we'll, we'll show the the logic session on how it works. But the, you know, the exciting (laughs) thing is that I, you know, when, as I've started, you know, now again, on the third and fourth, one of these, like, you know, in my mind, like I was saying earlier, the, you know, I want to keep the song, I want to keep the integrity of the song. So in my mind, I think initially it was like, you know, here is, here is the track. And then I'm just adding orchestra underneath it. And it's funny now looking at my logic sessions, what makes up, you know, the rhythm track is actually fairly small. And then I look at yeah. all the orchestra elements and it's, you know, I you think know, I might, 70. I could, <laughs> do you have it up on your screen? Because I think I could show it. I mean, we were playing around. Oh, can you share your screen again? And I could probably yes, go to I, it. Yes, Let's try. Anyway. I mean, here we're live. We can do whatever we want, right? So we're we gonna can't try play this. it, but we can see it. Yeah, yeah. We were gonna try and play it, and maybe we'll do that later. So see if it can come up, Mason. I don't know if it'll. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to the screen and see if it does. Oh, look at that! There we go. I just gotta move Mason's face over just a little bit. But sure, <laughs> go ahead, Mason. You t- tell us. There we go. Yeah. 
Tell us what you got so, there. This is so great. So, so this is the logic session for same guy. And again, like I said, one maybe one day down the road we'll be able to to play some of this stuff for you. But yeah. um, you know, so the cool thing is like from here to I would say really kind of about here is probably See, what, I'm playing you know, was it. the original track. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Go ahead, you keep talking. Oh yeah. So you know, so this was like the original session, and then you know, you look here and there's three things that are orchestra. And if I expand this from here to here are just strings. Wow. And so, you know, and again, they happened throughout the entire song. And then, you know, I, I, I can close this and, you know, these are my horns. And then this is all like, you know, trumpets and trombones and stuff. So like, you know, it's all there it's all in the mix and everything. And it's, you know, it takes a lot to make that up. And so, mm -hmm. I, you know, again, like I think, you know, as I was doing this, I was like, yeah, you know, there will be some orchestral elements. And then, you know, as you start, like, again, I crafted this intro and I'm like, gosh, you know, like this would be cool. And this would be cool. And this would be cool. And yeah. then you just look at it and you're like, well, now I'm up to, you know, here, I'm up to 111 tracks, oh, of, you know, of stuff on it. Um, and yeah. so, you know, but I, I, I think that like, to me, that that's what I love about this is, like I said, I, I wanted to do like a, a cool intro for Same God. I think the mm -hmm, song just kind of mm -hmm. called for it. And, you know, initially started with piano. And I and again, I had this idea and I worked on it. And then, you know, it, it just, it evolves and it just becomes this big thing. And I, but yeah. I, again, I think what you're saying, like, that's what, to me, this is what I think we're envisioning the new sound for church choir and what, you know, we kind of see this direction going. Again, if you listen to it, the integrity of the song is there. You still have the acoustic guitar yeah. elements, the synth elements, the guitars and everything. But then you just have this kind of grandiose orchestral stuff behind it. And then, you know, uh, uh, you know, down the road, we'll be able to add on choir on top of it. And it's just going to be this yeah. marvelous thing. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Aside from uh, logic, now this is getting really nerdy for those of you who have orchestras. Uh, but just let's talk a little bit about the stylistic sound of the orchestra because and I, I hope I don't offend anyone, but there is a little bit of a sound, say, from the 90s or the 80s. It's that kind of 90s or 80s church orchestra sound. You know, it, almost it's kind of like influenced from those orchestrations that you found in the back of the hymnal where everyone was just kind of, playing, you know, through this sort of chordal melody kind of thing. And here we are now 30 or 40 years later, and uh, certainly as praise charts, we're trying to, like, help not just the rhythm section and not just the electric pianos and and uh, synths and, and main stage and all of that progress, but we mm -hmm. also want to help the orchestra progress in its sound and, and evolve over time. Yeah. There, music does that. Music evolves. So why don't we talk specifically about some of the sonic things that are going on that might be different from the way it was 20 or 30 years ago? Yeah. Well, so the, you know, the interesting thing is, and I, I told just, you know, when I first met, like first met you, I didn't, I didn't grow up in the church choir world. Um, yeah. And so, uh, you know, I was kind of first introduced to that when I went to Lee University. And I thought like, you know, I remember sitting in the church orchestra playing trumpet and it was like, man, this is so cool. People should be doing this for a living. Spoiler <laughs> alert, they are. <laughs> yeah, right. And so, and you know, and, I, and, I, and it was kind of like, it was a lot of things that I, that I loved. Again, I'm an instrumentalist. I love orchestra. I love orchestral yeah. music. Choir is amazing. And then, you know, grew up listening to rock and roll music and stuff like that. And so it was just, it was kind of like this, again, kind of amalgamation of all these things coming together. And, you know, so when I, when I started working at Brentwood Benson, um, I just, I kind of just took, you know, dove in and started learning what this sound was. And, and, you know, and I think like you, like you said, everything evolves, music evolves. Think about, I mean, gosh, I mean, you know, the, years i mean just in the past five years of how worship music has changed right and so you know for me again coming from like the film score background like i you know i love john williams music i don't you know who doesn't love john williams music but there's a big difference if you listen to a john williams score and a Hans zimmer score and yeah. and i think you know 
movie scores have 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 moved to kind of embrace that style and i think it's kind of the same thing with me like i i love hearing like the 80s and 90s church music i think it's very cool again it's yeah. i didn't grow up with so i love it but i think there's a there's a new sound for for it now and i think that's that's kind of where i take this from is like yeah you know music has evolved and again if i if i approach it from like my you know or orchestral kind of film score background like i love the idea of embracing more cinematic style like big brass big string sections yeah. um in the recording and the great thing is like the you know the the use of stems has changed the landscape for church right. music and especially right. using patches now like you know you no longer have to have a 60 piece orchestra at christmas to pull off something that you hear on the recording mm -hmm. you know you can have a smaller group and the stems just enhance what you have and mm -hmm. so so I, I'm saying all to say, like, you know, again, in the, you know, 70 plus, you know, tracks I have orchestral music, like on Same God, don't feel like you have to have four French horns or, you know, four Trump, like you can have one of each, you can have none. Yeah. And it still works. And I think that, you know, that's where um, the, the, I kind of want to take this is like, and I, I love this, we were saying like this grandiose, majestic, big sound and mm -hmm. and and so and that's how i write and so again like i i you know when i'm programming orchestra i definitely do that a lot of the stems that i have or the the samples i have are geared to that mm -hmm. but then also when i write i you know i want to make sure too that what i'm writing in finale matches also what i've done in the orchestration yeah. i don't want yeah. these two weird things to come about no. and so yeah um so again it's like as you're as you follow the score and everything yeah you probably won't hear woodwinds in the track or you know you may not hear every single trumpet part that happens yeah. um but you'll at least get the idea that if i play this score or if i play my part along with the recording it's just going to complement the yeah. recording or what yeah. i'm doing so yeah yeah i think here is a, an example of something that would be this more cinematic styling. Uh, I, surely if you are like, um, you know, a pro level flute player, you're going to be like, well, that looks like an elementary person could play that or something. But it's going right. to sound really great supporting yep. the worship experience mm -hmm. for the church and not distracting with like, right. You know, I mean, right. no offense, that all belongs in certain places, but absolutely, th that's just, absolutely. this is a style of orchestrating that. Yes. I love what you were saying, actually, about the integration of the multi-track, the, the mm -hmm. choir, the congregation and orchestra, like working together. So you don't have to do it all from one place. And, yeah. uh, and yeah. the things that you do actually sound amazing. Yeah. So. Well, and, 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 you know, I will say too, like, you know, I, I'm going to write for everybody. So mm -hmm. the, you know, nobody's sitting there <laughs> and feeling like they're bored on Sunday morning. And again, like you're saying, yes, it may not be the most interesting part. And right. there are times for that. And there are times that we don't need that. And I, I think, you know, the whole thing is to complement the worship. We don't need something that is overtaking the choir and the worship experience like that, like, this is still worship. This is not a feature for anybody. You know, we're, right. we're doing right. this for a reason. And so yeah. I think that's the thing is, you know, shine when you can, you know, and, and I say yeah. like, you know, I'll, I will write some interesting things when it deems appropriate, you yeah. know, but for the most part, like I, I just, I want things to complement the track. You should just, yeah. you should have this, like, uh, if, if you're the choir member, especially if you're that choir, that's that you are the leading choir, there's no one, there's no worship at our front. Like, you should just have this bed of sound that just makes you feel better about what you're doing. And, you know, if you've all these other things that are kind of going in and out and, you know, it, it can, it can become distracting. And so uh, that's just another kind of idea I have when I'm writing this stuff is just, I want to make, again, everyone feel comfortable what they're doing and have nothing that's too hard or too easy. Yeah. But again, just creates this kind of sound, this bed of sound that makes everyone feel comfortable about what they're doing. Very good. Very good. Well, we're at the end of the hour. And uh, Mason, I think you forgot that other people were listening in because this was just like a regular <laughs> conversation. You did amazing. This was super informative. 
I know we were going a little bit into the weeds. We don't always do this in uh, praise charts, but I, I love, I actually love doing um, YouTube lives like this where we bring up the music and we go and we sort of, I mean, this is why I got into praise charts 25 years ago, because I love this stuff. I love notes on a page and seeing how they're laid out and seeing how they sound and seeing your logic yeah. screen, seeing the whole thing come together. But then um, even today, I think I didn't quite fully grasp how intentional we are about this being a a worship it's primarily like the the focus is for worship so this is not to make your choir into the star or the orchestra mm -hmm. into the star this is about to give glory to somebody else right and so if you're not playing the most interesting trill or guitar solo or something like that that makes you stand out it's because we're trying to make somebody else stand out and have an Absolutely. experience together that creates room for that. So yes. what we're going to do in Praise Charts is we're going to help identify the greatest worship songs that we can find, you know, the songs that have like are having a global impact. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to provide really great arrangements with key variations for different sized um, choirs and then ability for your orchestra, even I love what you even what you were saying is you take uh, a, a French horn, a trumpet, and a flute. I mean that's how I started with my orchestra. It was a tuba and yeah. an oboe and a flute, and that's how Praise Start started in 1998, literally. Okay, <laughs> but I didn't have a multi track, and we sounded terrible. And <laughs> you can sound amazing because you can have those yeah. three or four instruments and your ten or twelve voice choir singing a unison two part vocal. And you put some multi tracks behind it. You layer up a few things. I mean, mm -hmm. people are going to come away from your church going, "What happened? <laughs> How did you do this?" Right, right. right. So exactly. that's that's the dream. That's the vision. Yes. That's the new sound that I that um, I didn't even know that's where I was heading. But now, boom! It just it all makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so, absolutely. The past three months have paid off. <laughs> totally. totally. <laughs> okay, so um, anyways, last quick thing is if you go, you can go to praisestars.com. There's a link in the um, show notes below where you can go to the signature sessions. And that's kind of like the overarching label within Praise Charts. You can see all the different variations of each one. More are going to be coming out. And then you will see like non-signature sessions versions that are just based off of original recordings. Those are going to start coming out. Um, I mean, it, in the next six months, there's going to be just so much incredible material coming out from Mason. And then we've got other arrangers, certainly Daniel Gal Galbraith, who's a, a core part of our arranging team. Um, a lot of this is stemming from his original orchestrations. And then, well, when Mason does the signature session, it's his orchestration. But different stylings, different variations, uh, lots of options. We just want to support you as a, as a church where you're at. So yes, we're loving absolutely. it. And Mason and I are constantly up. I was up at like 3.30 this morning just because I <laughs> couldn't sleep because I was excited for this. We're launching this all today. And uh, <sighs> all right. And yeah. tomorrow, tomorrow, I mean, Mason and I, we, we have little chuckles about our friend that we share in common, Travis Cottrell, <laughs> who's a bit of the inspiration to behind this he talks to a very close friend of yours i know and uh becoming a close friend of mine too travis if you're listening we we love you uh so much we're very inspired by the the heart that you have and the sound that you're after because you're pushing us towards mm -hmm. this kind of like almost like rock orchestra type sound right you know trying to yep. sound like we're from 2022 but use the instruments that have been around for a couple hundred years and Absolutely. full choir so yes travis will be with me tomorrow we will be hamming it up and anything that we dished out to him today we're gonna dish back out to mason because mason will be here to defend himself so that'll be fun tomorrow <laughs> i'm sure he will i'm sure he will so that's i think at 11 a.m central time something like that check the show notes we'll link to it it's in our youtube channel that's going to be live. And if you can't be with us live, you can watch it anytime you want. And uh, 
yeah, so this has been fun. Let's do it, Mason. Thank you very much. We've got work to yeah, do, man. You. you have a full week ahead of you. we got to get a thousand really hallelujahs do. out before the week ends. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Hope you're all encouraged, and uh, you can go find all the music. It's all live right now in Praise Starts. See you later.